Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm really glad that we're having this conversation. I think we're kind of overdue for it, long overdue. Um, and I'm trying to recognize that there's long-term implications here as well as short-term. Um, but I'm kind of curious if you could talk more about your prioritization process, because um, I think that there's a lot of people in um, low-income minority communities that feel that they don't, they're not heard often when it comes to these types of issues. And where, where do they, how does that play out? You know, I'm, I appreciate what we're doing here in this particular zip code, um, but there's other areas across the state that we all know is um, we have major issues in and we're waiting, there are things, big things are waiting to happen. So if you could talk more about that prioritization process. Yeah, um, so Representative, I couldn't agree more. Um, and in fact, that's been a priority of ours um, for the last year. So um, just a couple of things at a high level before I talk about the prioritization itself. Um, in the executive order that created EGLE, as many are aware, we also created the Office of the Environmental Justice Public Advocate. Um, Regina Strong, who came on board like last year, like it was right away in February. Um, she's also organizing uh, an interagency uh, response team around environmental justice that's been meeting monthly um, across, the, uh, across the departments. Um, so there's a, a lot of departments that sit at that table. Um, they've been meeting monthly since, since July and we'll soon be announcing um, an environmental justice um, advisory committee as well. Um, we think it's really important to meet communities where they are and to understand what their concerns are. And in fact, that's something that I think our team did really well with the Detroit River uh, incident um, with Detroit Bulk Storage was, you know, have real frank conversations, understanding what the community's concerns were. Um, we've also created a role that is a drinking water public advocate or clean water public advocate. So Nina Sassy has joined us in that role as well. Um, these are avenues to create more dialogue, right? They're ways to try to make sure that we're getting more perspective, meeting people where they're at, and um, uh, adding more of that dialogue to the work that we do. Um, but when it comes to prioritization, um, you know, we think a lot about that impact to public health, right? So we have limited resources and we want to use the resources you allocate to us wisely. And so we want to focus on, um, you know, where is that biggest opportunity to minimize risk to public health um, and the environment. And so, you know, that's largely um, the framework through which we look at those sites. Um, I will say, and um, this is, you know, something that is near and dear to my heart, I want us to look at that prioritization scheme and understand what are we doing, how are we doing it, are we doing it in the best way possible, um, which is one of the reasons, you know, I'm excited to have Mike on the team and have his brain thinking about this. Mike, I don't know if you have anything to add around prioritization that I didn't hit. Uh, nothing really, just again, as the director said, you know, our, our primary focus is, all, is drinking water first and then the other uh, vapor intrusion issues and uh, indoor air quality, and then, and then it goes from there. And so then it's, it's uh, trying to figure out what poses the immediate threat or biggest risk and then how we can best uh, go about trying to remediate those. 